They say that most people in this life are unhappy with their jobs. Bad pay, late hours, shit boss, all the usual reasons that most people wish that they could do any job but their own. Not that I think anyone would be willing to trade with me. I'd give anything for my biggest concern to be whether or not I'm finally going to get that raise I think I deserve this year. Instead, I've been stuck forever in the same bloody loop. No breaks, no holidays. Certainly no thanks. I know that I'm hated. And if I'm not hated, I'm feared. I'm tired of looking at the humorous side of things. I mean, there are some people who come in here who could do with winning a Darwin Award. <laughs> like, like that poor sucker who died when her pet camel tried to mount her. <laughs> or, or the doting husband who suffocated when he stuffed two tampons up his nose to try and stop his snoring. Oh, and the overzealous man who overdosed on Viagra and died with the most alarming erection. <laughs> Not the way you want your family to remember you. It may be some grim humour, but I guess it makes a break from the usual crushing illnesses, devastating accidents, and the ultimate kicker of bodily failures. Nobody wants a visit from me. I'm the last person anyone wants to see. He can't imagine the hate I get on a daily basis. This job should come with an emotional switch that I could just flick and not feel anything. Yeah, I'm burdened with empathy and sorrow for every life I affect. I appear at the worst times for everybody. And even if the person I'm there for has accepted what I have to do, the rest of their group still cry at me and try to bargain and beg, but I can't help them. I learnt a long time ago what happened if I, let, if I took sympathy on someone. I learnt it the hard way. His name was Oliver. I've been there for him through all his accidents and ailments. The first time I met him was when he had a slight fender bender in his car. What well, I say, his car, it was more of a joyriding incident. Ollie was a bit of a hellraiser in his youth, but he pulled through. The bang to his head wasn't that bad. And the next time I saw him, it wasn't really for him. He was a visitor, not the patient. His mother was dying. Pneumonia brought on by her illness. It was then that I realised that I'd be paying, playing a big part in Ollie's life from now on. You see, Huntington's disease is hereditary. So I knew that in his final years, I'd see him more than once. It's sad, really. Through seeing Ollie at his, through his worst times, I got to see how his life had changed and I saw him go from a troublemaker to a husband and a father and an amazing man. I kept refusing to let him slip away. When his legs gave way and he tumbled down a flight of stairs, I let him stay with his family. And when he choked on food because his body forgot how to swallow, I let him have just a little longer. And when he forgot he had a lit cigarette in his mouth and nearly set the couch on fire, I allowed him to continue. I let him continue his life, allowed his family to have him for just a little longer.
just a little longer. I couldn't help wanting have, to have him around. And looking into his family's sorrowful faces, I couldn't make them deal with the grief. And hearing Ollie pleading, not wanting to leave them alone, what was I supposed to do? Looking back, maybe it would have been better if I'd just let him slip away. Because now, when I look at him, the people he loves, I see anguish. A life of pain that we all selfishly tried to draw out, but all knew wasn't going to last. I could leave him just one last time. Let him stay just a little longer. But what would I be allowing to live? A soul full of hurt, stuck in a body that stopped being able to function for itself. Seeing Oliver for the last time, I knew this was it. Spending your days being hooked up to machines isn't living. He was having one of his rare moments of clarity when he actually remembered who his family were and that they all loved him. And it was the perfect moment when his heart rate began to slow. And he finally looked my way and I could see in his eyes that he knew what I was there to do and he was accepting, and he was fulfilled, and it was time. He asked me who I was, and I answered him as I always did. I've been called many names, Thanatos, Anku, Yan Lu, the Grim Reaper, but I'm the Angel of Death. That's how I see myself. I'm not bad. I get no pleasure in taking you. I just have to. You can ask your questions. Is there anything else? Will I go to heaven? Does it hurt? Why me? But I can't answer. I can only tell you what I know. And that is... Your time is up. I can guide you through it. If you'll let me, I can help you deal with the fear or the sadness. I am the last embrace you will ever feel. I am the last kiss that will ever linger on your lips. I am death. Are you ready to come with me, Ollie? 